Hey guys, so as usual, all information on this channel is for educational purposes only and is not intended to provide financial advice. Alright, so a user on Reddit, well spent time, was asking me what's a good indicator for basic traders. Uh, he was getting started on Elliott Wave. I said that was a disaster. Elliott Wave, uh, I don't like Elliott Wave. <laughs> Uh, so I pointed him to EMAs and I showed him an example of Bitcoin. And the basic premise is you use a slow and a fast, in this case a 200 and a 100 moving average. And basically when the MAs cross, you take a trade. That, that's your entry signal or your exit signal. So for instance here we'd have the slow MA over the fast MA that suggests the beginning of a downtrend so you open a short. Uh, here we have some garbly mess so sometimes when the MAs are tight that suggests there's uh, basically sideways so you have to use some discretion as far as when to enter a trade uh, based on you know everything else but you could always just enter an exit on every cross that way you're just objective about it and not subjective about, you know, where we're at in the price. You can, it's hard to misinterpret if you're just automatically objective about everything. Uh, so I call this a bullish cross. I don't think it actually crossed again. I'd have to zoom in on this to double check, but the point is this cross is bullish. So you're long down here at like 230, okay? <laughs> and obviously this is an amazing trade to make. Now you'd have to close, you know, whenever you think is right at this point, but uh, one idea to discover the exit would be the distance from the MA itself, the price distance from the MA. That suggests whether or not it's uh, overbought or oversold. So because this is so far away from the moving average, price tends to want to stay in equilibrium and come back to these moving averages. So that's your your hint that this is really overbought. One hint among many that uh, this is going to come down. I mean, you could always close it on the next candle as well. So there's many ways to trade this specific instance. Um, this bear cross I don't think actually happened uh, because we uh, price moved up basically either in the, the next day or within the next few hours of this triangle. Uh, I actually sold some coin uh, before this did anything, because I was too afraid it was actually gonna, it was actually going to uh, break based on this. It was some of my evidence anyway. So let's talk about some basic moving average strategies. There's four key things you'll see on any website talking about trading stuff. The first obvious thing is the trend. Moving averages are great at assessing. The, the trend. Remember, the trend is your friend. You don't want to trade against the trend. You want to find the trend as fast and easily as possible. Okay, so I'm just going to start here. If I'm looking, the red is the 200, so that's the slow. The blue is the fast, the 50. Okay, so I'm just looking at the red, the slow, uh, the 200. I can see here basically is the beginning of an uptrend and here is the beginning of a downtrend, okay? And again, you can say downtrend, uptrend. So that's your basic trend decision strategy, okay? Is it above or below the 200? That's a common strategy a lot of many traders use in uh, professional trading as well. The next thing you wanna assess, like I said in the last chart, price position relative to the MA. So we can see here, price position relative to the MA, this is the all-time high, uh, is pretty overbought. It's overbought not only on the slow, the 50, but it's super overbought based on the 200, okay? So this says, be careful longing here, be careful uh, keeping your long open up here. Uh, this says, get ready to close. Now, this, among other things, not only is this hindsight now, but if I would have known what I knew now back then, uh, this is a tweezer top, which I ex sort of explained in the candle video, uh, in the last video. So this would tell you, do not long this, close your long, possibly short this, okay? So next, 
uh, basic strategy part of it is the strength, like I keep mentioning, the distance above or below. Um, if the trend is, like here we see it's really far below the 200, it's even below the 50. Um, so that says there's, definite, there's a definite trend, but it also says be careful shorting this, because again, it's pretty oversold. It gets very oversold here, and I know all this seems like hindsight, but you can use MAs with other stuff. Uh, so the third part of the strategy is entry. So I already mentioned the MA cross. A lot of bots use the MA crosses. They're not always great. Um, on a high time frame like the daily, the MA crosses are pretty powerful. Um, so you can see when the 50 and 200 cross, that's a great signal for a short because you have a, a slow MA over the fast MA, the 200 over the 50, okay? And it, likewise here, we have the fast over the 200, which would be a long entry signal. So another way to play this is with a price touch of the actual MA itself. So we can see here, uh, if I'm looking at the 200, and I'm, I'm seeing we have an established downtrend. So what I can do is put my asks at the 200. So your, your orders would be here. Or your orders could be at the slower MA, uh, the 50. Um, so one way you could play this is you could say, wow, this is really overbought. Let's put some asks here with a stop, like here, okay, uh, and see what happens. And in this case, it worked out, and you could have played, you know, this to this, which would have been the previous support. Um, then you'd stay out of the trade until potentially, again, the 50 is touched. You'd get stopped out. Uh, and if you still had asks up here, you would open a short. Again, this is hindsight, but this is one way to play it. Uh, another key part of the MAs is when a cross is about to happen and doesn't happen, that's kind of a, I think of it as a powerful signal as well. Again, this is hindsight, but this happened here. So we have a break of both the 50 and the 200. And we can see it's kind of like a B-band break where things get really tight and uh, direction change is coming. That's when we know. Um, that's when we know it's time to pay attention and make a decision based on: uh, Are we entering a trade? Are we exiting a trade? Are we getting stopped out? Things like that. So the fourth strategy with the MAs is the stop out or being stop loss. Um, basically, if, if you're in a trade and a candle closes above or below an MA that suggests uh, an exit of the trade. So for instance, if I went uh, long based on this cross, and I get a candle close below the fast, uh, then that would be a stop. That could be one example of how to use this. Um, I didn't mention this again, but if you're looking at the quickest way to get in a trend reversal, you can see me break the 50 here. So this would be a long entry signal, even though the trend is technically bearish. Um, it's like a high risk, high reward uh, entry sig entry signal for a long. So we can see since uh, April, basically we we've had zero 5200 crosses. Slope is looking good. Uh, price is pretty close to the 50. You can see how I hugged the 50 basically this entire ascending triangle. You can see even on these dips. It keeps tapping this 50 MA. So something you might be wondering as far as what do you want to do for your own chart, um, there's many variables for MAs. You can use different lengths. 5200 is probably the most common, um, but you can do literally anything you want. Just choose a fast and a slow. So the type of moving average, there's a ton of different types. There's EMA, SMA, MA, TEMA. Uh, I'm not going to go into the math, but they're all slightly different. They're all basically just dynamic support and resistance. That's all MAs are. Um, you can use this on any time frame you want, and you can also use more than one moving average. You could use five moving averages if you want and use like those as entry signals. If you get a cross on three of the five, that would be an entry signal, for example. 
if you're newer to trading, I'd stick to two. Uh, make fewer trades, make better trades with uh, less, you know, analysis paralysis. So I mentioned the 5200 crosses. These are actually significant. They're even given their own name. So the golden cross would be the bullish 50 over 200, and the death cross would be the 200 over 50. You can see here these didn't quite pan out as well as these have, um, but you can see why they're named, because when they do pan out, they pan out really well. Um, so if you were short from 500, you know, that's... <laughs> let's say you closed at 200, that's a $300 trade, um, and then if you opened at 240 and closed at 700, you know, that's another three, $400 trade. So if I'm moving down on the time frames, let's go to the 4-hour on Bitfinex. So like I said, you can use any time frame you want. And uh, again, we have a death cross, we have a golden cross. Put, um, I put the chart patterns on here just to give you some context with these uh, MAs. It's best to use MAs with other stuff, otherwise you're kind of like lost, I think. Um, at the very least, use a horizontal support resistance with the MAs. Um, so you can see we get not only a break of this ascending triangle, we get a death cross, potentially doomed city, which held. So you could have shorted this, you would have stopped, got stopped out. Um, I don't think I actually shorted it, but, uh, and then we get the, the golden cross, okay? So, among other things, this tells you it's time to go long now. Again, you can say, oh, this is just hindsight. That's fine. But the point is, when the crosses happen, that's a great entry signal. And you can see we're not exactly hugging the 50, but we're pretty close to it. That doesn't suggest it's super overbought. Um, even up here, it's not too crazy, but when it breaks this 50, that's your definite stop. Um, so let's say if you if you were long here, you'd get stopped out here for sure. If you hadn't already closed based on potential head and shoulders, tweezer tops, etc. So currently on the four hour slope is sideways, basically or flat. There's really nothing to trade here. Uh, one thing you could do is trade the break of the 50. Usually you trade that to the next EMA, so there's not really much reward here. Um, this break is actionable between this MA to this MA because it's so wide. So if we move down to the hourly, uh, again I'm mentioning this 50, we're on a strong uptrend. We're hugging the MA. Uh, we're not, so that suggests we're not too overbought. Uh, and again, that kind of breaks down here when we, uh, that principle breaks down here because it doesn't look like we're so overbought, but uh, you could say, well, we're pretty far from the 200. I don't know. This is subjective, so however, however you want to do it. Um, and then when we break down here and we get super oversold, not only will your oscillators tell you you're oversold, but the distance from the 200, again, tells you you're oversold because it's so far away. So not only are you getting this W bottom, but you're getting this 200 telling you this is a good buy opportunity because this uh, price is so far away. Potential reversal is likely. Uh, and you could have said that here and you would have been wrong. And you'd say, well, that doesn't make any sense. But again, you're not just using the MA, you're using the chart pattern as well. So again, right now MAs are tight. A price close below the 200 outside of this triangle, I'd say, is actionable as far as a short entry signal. You could open the trade before it clo the candle closes. You could open the trade after the cross. The earlier you open it, the riskier it gets and the higher the reward gets. Lastly, I just want to mention this MMAR, which is a ribbon, moving average ribbon. Um, if you graduate to understanding all the other stuff, uh, basically these are like 10 MAs stacked on each other that sort of flip when... Uh, direction changes. I don't really have much else to say about it. Um, something that, again, you just need a lot of experience to know what it's trying to tell you. So if you have any questions, leave them below. Happy trading.